Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill and this time we've got the first in the two-part series about the field effect transistor. So let's make a start by having a very high level look at what is a very important member of the electronics building block family. The field effect transistor then comes in two distinct types. Uh, first type is the JFET or Junction FET has the symbol that looks a little like that. That's the symbol for the N channel version, a little bit like a conventional transistor, the direction of the arrow decides if it's N channel or P channel. And the MOS or metal oxide semiconductor FET, which has a symbol that looks like that, uh, or it can also have a symbol that looks like that. Again, the arrow uh, dictates whether it's N channel or P channel, but those two symbols describe either the enhancement mode or depletion, depletion mode of those two uh, types of MOSFET. Now the effect of an electric field is what controls operation as opposed to charge carriers, charge carriers being electrons or holes. Um, they've got a much higher impedance um, compared to bipolar junction transistors and that's very handy if you want a very effective buffer. It can also be very handy for amplifying um, very low level signals. Uh, they've also got a lower power consumption compared to bipolar junction transistors and because they use less power therefore there's a lower thermal penalty to pay, in other words they don't get quite so warm and if there's thousands or tens of thousands of them fabricated onto a, the substrate of, a, of an integrated circuit then that means the integrated circuit will, uh, will run cooler and that's definitely very good. They're also physically smaller so therefore it's easy to fabricate them on complex ICs. So those are the important characteristics of field effect transistors and this video we're just going to concentrate on the junction field effect transistor or JFET. So before we dive into any theory about how JFETs work let's actually have a look uh, on the bench at uh, JFET on the breadboard. Okay, let's look at uh, an FET on the bench then. So the circuit we've got here, uh, there's the FET. I'm using this potentiometer here as a, as a resistive uh, voltage divider between my supply rails. I've got about 10 volts uh, coming in here uh, and I'm using the uh, wiper of the potentiometer there to um, create about 5 volts and I've got the FET's uh, source and drain connected between positive and that uh, that center rail there. Uh, I need to do that because I want to be able to take the gate voltage uh, negative with respect to the source and that's what this potentiometer here does. Uh, and I've got a, a resistor in here as well uh, which prevents me from accidentally forward biasing the, the gate source junction which isn't a, a good thing to do. So the meter here then is displaying the gate voltage and currently you can that's the gate voltage with respect to the source and currently it's zero so I'm going to just twiddle this potentiometer now and I'm going to start applying a negative voltage to the gate very gently there she comes so I'm now beginning to reverse bias the gate source junction and as you can see by the time I've reached 100 millivolts um, the brightness of the LED is dimming down quite considerably if I go to 200 millivolts it's pretty much gone completely um, so it's most definitely gone off now so first thing to say there is then that um, with the gate just at zero volts uh, the FET is conducting and in fact we can demonstrate that if I very carefully flick off the connection to the gate this isn't the easiest thing to do but um, I'll explain why that is in a minute there we go so I've just removed now so the gate is now not connected it's just floating and as you can see um, the FET is still conducting so it's um, it's in its normally on state now the reason I was being so careful doing that if I now apply the gate bias voltage again and we'll just demonstrate that's still working if I now take the gate negative um, we very quickly turn off the the uh, the device 
so the reason I was so careful about prizing that off using my non-metallic tool is this because uh, if I take the gate voltage off you notice it's off there but if I go anywhere near it you'll see it instantly um, turns on again and that's because the amount of um, static electricity that's um, sitting uh, in my body is quite sufficient to um, to cause the FET to begin to conduct again <laughs> um, so that's uh, an example of um, why it's uh, such a high impedance device so to recap then uh, ordinarily with the gate source voltage at zero uh, the FET is conducting the JFET if I start taking that voltage negative very slow I'm going to do it very slowly just so you can see the effect LED starting to dim now and by the time we're at 50 millivolts it's very obviously turning off by 100 millivolts it's still on but um, only just and it's completely gone out there at about 250 millivolts right let's have a look what's going on there having seen the FET in operation on the breadboard let's see if we can explain some of the things that we observed in practice uh, an FET then uh, or a JFET is constructed from a, a piece of silicon it will either be N type or P type depending whether it's an N channel or a P channel today we've looked at an N channel and that N channel has the connection at the bottom the negative connection which is the source and the positive connection which is the drain notice they both of those are connected to the um, same piece of silicon there and so the device to a certain extent um, will work in either direction although it is designed to be um, more effective in one direction than the other inlaid into that are two um, pieces of p-type silicon in the case of the, the N channel or they would be N type in the case of a P channel and those two uh, pieces of silicon uh, are connected together and they form the gate so we've sort of got a bit of a, a diode going on there in some respects and that is indeed true and that's the principle of operation I guess of a, of a JFET so ordinarily electrons will flow from source to drain and there's nothing really um, to stop that happening the electrons are, are carried towards the positive in the case of a, a p-channel JFET it would be the holes that were attracted towards the, the negative but we'll stick with them um, with n-channel for this explanation now if we and apply some uh, voltage to the gate such that the gate the gate and the drain source junction becomes reverse biased we generate uh, a depletion region and the size of that depletion region is based on on the voltage that we're applying to the gate and the effect of that is actually to initially to restrict the flow of charge carriers from source to drain and if we continue to increase that um, in the case of an N channel a negative voltage the P the depletion zone increases uh, to the point where it actually cuts off the flow of charge carriers and notice that the depletion region tends to be uh, dragged towards the drain and that's a function of the uh, of the um, relative charges so that's what we've been observing on the breadboard um, and one of the reasons you can take the connection off the gate and allow it to still carry on is because in effect um, with the gate connected to nothing we've actually got uh, that effect going on and um, the charge carriers can simply move from source to drain okay now I wonder if um, we should just quickly look at that and say first of all then a small change in the voltage between the gain and the gate and the source uh, results in quite a large change in the current between drain and source um, so that's um, key so um, it's a voltage control device and the gate current is negligible and again that's another reason why uh, it's such a high impedance device now if you've ever done any work with um, valves or for my um, North American listeners tubes um, there's a bit of a an analogy here with the triode this is a triode and in a triode we've got an anode at the top cathode at the bottom and a grid there and the charge carriers would normally 
be attracted towards the anode from the cathode and the voltage uh, on the gate uh, would control how many of those charge carriers in the case of a valve it will be electrons how many of those electrons will actually reach the anode so I guess in a way there's quite a parallel between um, between a JFET and a triode there then are the characteristics that make a JFET actually work so let's now have a look at a practical application for a JFET in this case uh, an amplifier and we'll examine that and use the oscilloscope to view what's actually going on at the input and the output of the amplifier here I've got a JFET configured uh, as an amplifier and I'm feeding in a 3 kilohertz signal uh, to the gate via this decoupling capacitor and taking the output via a second decoupling capacitor here. The bias on the gate is from that is by that resistor and this beta tensiometer. I've got both channels of the scope set to the same uh, volts per division so you can see the amplification that's going on. Um, and we've got this sine wave being fed in and we've got a nice sine wave coming out as you can see considerably um, higher amplitude so it's definitely um, amplification going on then also you can see there's a, a difference in phase um, if I measure that uh, using one of my other scopes I get about 105 106 degrees so there is a, a change in phase and that uh, is potentially important uh, from a circuit design point of view and it's a similar kind of effect that you get with um, uh, a common emitter amplifier so there we go, that's an FET, um, very obviously producing a uh, nice clean uh, amplified wave and if we just uh, turn up the volts per division onto channel 1 you can indeed see that uh, it is a nice clean sine wave that's going in and it's a nice clean sine wave that's coming out. So that's a practical application for a JFET. Here's the circuit of the amplifier I've just been looking at input coming in through a coupling capacitor and we've got the biasing network for the for the gate consisting of a 110k resistor and then we've got the output taken from the drain uh, with the source connected uh, down to the negative rail and here's the grab from the scope uh, with uh, measurement set up to check the phase and getting a mean phase difference between input and output of about 105 degrees something like that so that's the JFET in a practical application as an amplifier there is one more curve that would probably be worthwhile mentioning and that's if you plot the drain source voltage against the drain source current you get a curve for any given gate source voltage that looks something like that and you quite often see these curves in data sheets where those they've actually plotted a curve for several values of gate source voltage and broadly speaking we can divide the linear region from the saturation region a little bit like that with a dotted line and you'd want an FET to, uh, that was going to be used in a switching operation you'd want to bias that so it worked in the linear region whereas for the example here where we've got the FET working as an amplifier you'd want to bias it so it worked in the saturation region okay so there you have the JFET um, working as an amplifier and its parallels with its bipolar junction transistor uh, counterparts hopefully that's been useful the next part of the video is going to look at the metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor or MOSFET which is a little bit more complicated in terms of a subject uh, than the JFET hopefully however this has made some sense so if you've liked the video please click the thumbs up if you haven't you can click the thumbs down either way I really appreciate your support be great if you could subscribe and tell others about the channel and I look forward to seeing you on the next video